Good noon. So our lesson for today is about vectors, kinematics, and equilibrium. This is our lesson 2 of our LED 30053 or teaching primary science. So for the objectives of this lesson is the first one is to distinguish this between scalar and vector quantity and then differentiate the concepts of distance, displacement, and velocity from each other. So when we say vector quantities, so these are the quantities with both magnitude and direction. So ibig sabihin, in physics, ito yung mga quantity na merong magnitude and direction. So example is, um, an object is moving with this kind, uh, having this kind of force and is moving towards northeast, southwest, southeast, ganon. And then, while the scalar quantities naman are those quantity na walang direction. So, example is, ng scalar quantity natin is um, an object falling at a rate of ganito, 25 meter per second and having a, a and bringing the, halimba, 750 joules so that is scalar quantity so example ng physical quantity natin are the following so example is displacement tapos velocity and acceleration we have also resultant vector which is about the summation of two or more vector halimbawa displacement plus velocity so resultant vector yon acceleration and displacement combined with each other or velocity and acceleration so that is a resultant vector and remember vector can be broken up into component kung meron kayong isang uh, isang wording or so solving problem in physics pwede pag iwahiwalayan nyo you can get displacement you can get niya a velocity of that thing and then the acceleration of that thing okay and then you can use Pythagorean theorem here so meron siyang mathematical application so we have here the two forces in equilibrium the first one is the static equilibrium meaning this is a condition kung saan balance lahat Sana yung halimbawa ng static equilibrium natin is meron ka ngayang alcohol na nakapatong sa table and there is no external factor that affects the alcohol. That is why yung alcohol na yon is having a static equilibrium. Okay? And that object remains motionless. Meaning to say, hindi siya gumagalaw. Well, for the center of gravity naman is the sum of all weights. So, halimbawa, kung ang pinaka-center ng katawan natin is our pusod, do you think the pusod brings the entire weight of your body? So, definitely no. So, the center of gravity is the part of the body of that object that contains the sum of all the weights. Ano po? So, hanapin mo yung pinaka-center nun. And yung highest concentration of all the weight of that object, yun yung tinatawag natin center of gravity. Okay, to continue also, so remember bakit nagkakaroon ng timbang ang isang object? Because in chemistry, matter is composed of tiny particles. And yung particles na yun ay merong timbang. And each of the forces that is contained or that are contained in that particle are affected by gravity. So example, kung yung fruit niya ng niyog is static siya, hindi siya gumagalaw, you can locate the particular part of that niyog that is affected by the center of gravity. Okay? So example, for a regularly shaped object, kadalasan nasa center siya. While, ano mo, bilog. So pinaka nasa center ng bilog. Or square. Or um, 
cube. Yung pinaka-center niya, center of that object is the one that contains the center of gravity. For the irregularly shaped object naman, you need to balance them by hanging or by using plumb line method. What is plumb line? This is our sampayan. Okay, so isasampay mo siya or isasabit mo siya or kung alam niyo yung hulog sa bahay pag nagtatay ng establishment or structure, yung hulog is a metal object that helps the carpenter um, determine the balance of that or, or yung linya niya is tira-diretso kasi yung center of gravity of that hulog is equal. Okay? So, <clears throat> we have different states of equilibrium. Remember, an object at rest may have three kinds of states of equilibrium. First one is stable. When we say stable, so uh, later on, stable, unstable, and neutral. So, nakadepende po siya sa position niya to determine whether it's stable, unstable, or neutral. So, the first condition of equilibrium is a single force by which facing alone or acting alone rather, which will produce the same effect as the system. So, kailan nagkakaroon ng first condition of the equilibrium? Kapag, kapag, yung single force is acting alone. And then, lahat niya is affected niya yung buong system. Anong limbaan nito? Nagigiling ka ngayon manually ng rice. Di ba yung dating gilingan ng rice is iikutin mo yung gilingan and then eventually, yung isang single force is affected yung entire system. So, that is the first state of equilibrium. <clears throat> Another one is the torque. When we say torque, this is produced by forces that is co that cause the object to rotate. Sa example ng torque natin is yung gulong ng ating sasakyan. And then we have also an application which is about our muscles and the joints of the human body. So here, a muscle may move depending to on the large forces. So ang muscle natin is usually flexible and connected at a joint like elbow, knee, ankle, and shoulder. So here, um, you can have a different factor or varying factor at some point of your body and that produces a different kind of equilibrium. Okay? And remember, force is something that produces motion. So, kung ang force is apparent or available, so magkakaroon ng possibility na yung object na acted by a force will have a magnitude or degree ng force and then direction or the, the, ano, the direction or the, the place being acted upon. Hanggang saan makakarating yung object na yun? That is the direction. And we call that as vector quantity. For the net force, it refers to the sum of all forces acting on a body. So, lahat na nung forces na nandun sa, kat sa body na yun. And then, we have also concurrent forces. At some point, meron siyang nagsasalubong na dalawang force. Example niyan is, kapag kayo ay tumutulak ng pintuan and then merong automatic na do uh, lock system yung door so pinuprevent ni door anong nung force ni door yung force mo to open that object and then at some point magmi-meet yung opposing forces ang tawag natin doon is concurrent forces okay Dito na tayo papasok ulit si static equilibrium kung saan there is no force at all. Center of gravity naman is the point at which the total weight of the body is concentrated. Kaya sa paan natin. So, bakit masyadong mamasal yung mga babaeng mahilig magsuot ng stiletto? Kasi concentrated sa heels nila 
or sa lower extremity nila yung center of gravity. Okay? And then, ang affecting factors for the stability of an object is the weight. Nabigat yung isa, the other one is not. Area of the bases, meaning hindi irregular yung base. Okay? And then, the location of the center of gravity. Let's proceed now with kinematics. So, i-differentiate natin sa speed from velocity. And, sana kung face-to-face, -face, you're expected to compute the unit of speed and change it or convert it to the velocity. And, as well as define acceleration and possible unit of acceleration. Okay, ulit-ulit na to. Ulitin lang ulit natin. Remember that motion is is a continuous change of position. Meaning to say, if an object is moving, nagbabago-bago yung kanyang position at a certain reference point. That is why you are saying, or you can safely say, that the object is in motion or is moving. So, pag dire-diretsya lang, we call it as translatory motion or straight line motion. Pero kapag naman pabago-bago, it's a different thing. Okay? When we say distance, this is the total length of path covered by an object. So, example, you will go to your CR, and then from CR, balik ka sa kwarto mo. So, that is the distance, the total length of path. And then, displacement naman is the distance between the starting and end point of a motion. So, this is actually tinatawag nating shortcut ang displacement. Okay? Ang speed naman is scalar quantity. Nabanggat ka na siya before. What is scalar quantity? It represents the rate of change of displacement. So, pwede natin gamitin ang speedometer para ma-measure ang speed. Gaano kabilis ang paggalaw na isang bagay from one reference point to another reference point. So, we can measure the magnitude of velocity using speedometer. So, kung may sasakyan kayo or sa motor ninyo, may kita nyo doon yung speedometer. Gaano kabilis? Alam ba, 40 km per hour. Ganun. And then, the average speed is the total distance traveled by object, by that object, divided by the time. So, ang computation nito, i-average nyo siya. So, distance na 500 km ngayon, lahat-lahat. And you, and that object ngayon, traveled uh, mga 72 minutes. So, you'll divide it by 72 minutes and that is the average speed. Pag average velocity, ano pagkakaiba ulit ng speed kay velocity? Velocity is having a direction. Okay? From one end to another end. Pag instantaneous velocity, this is the object, uh, the speed, or the velocity rather of an object at a particular instant. So, halimbawa, I'm traveling from F. Semyon to P. U. Piragay. And it happened na merong, I'm, a, uh, I'm traveling yeah, 60 km from F. Semyon to Liboro. And then 40 km from Liboro to Binahan. 10 km from Binahan to Proper. I do not know the place. Kasi ngayon merong accident. So it, um, the vehicle moves very, very slow. So at some point, from P uh, from F Semyon to Liboro, that is instantaneous speed. From Liboro to Binahan, another instantaneous speed. Okay? At certain point, remember, at a certain point of the tangent to the given time. Let's proceed with acceleration. When we say acceleration, acceleration is the change of velocity. So bumilis ba siya or bumagal? That is acceleration. So, paano malalaman to? You need to compute it by means of determining the change in velocity at a particular time. So, example, from this point to another reference point, ang traveling niya is 6 meter niya per second. Another point niya is 7 meter per second. So, you can say that the, that, uh, that the object is accelerated because may difference siya ng 1. 
meron din naman tinatawag tayong decelerating which is ayun nagbabawas. Kunyari, nagta-travel siya 6 meter per second sa unang point. Another point is 3 meters na lang. So, ano nangyari? Nagbagal siya. So, that is decelerating. When we say uniform acceleration, this is acceleration that is fixed in terms of direction and the movement is still the same. So, ano halimbawa ng mga bagay na may uniform acceleration? Yung mga bagay na may fixed or constant na speed. Gaya ng bullet train, LRT, MRT, ano pa, airplane. Pag nasa taas na, uniform speed, ano yun? Uniform na yung kanyang acceleration. Okay? Let me now proceed with the force of gravity. When we say force of gravity, in this lesson, short lesson, you will explain why the objects are falling. And then, the different Newton's law of gravitation. And why is it that some objects appears to be weightless? Okay? So, balikan natin yung tinuro sa inyo ng high school kayo. Wherein, during Aristotle time, people in his time believed that all objects on earth were composed of four elements. Earth, water, fire, and air. So, eto ay may several belief sila, pero ang uniform belief nila is kung air ka, nasa taas ka. Kung water, nandun ka sa part ng water. Kung terrestrial naman or si earth, nandun ka sa pinakamababang part. And then water is sometimes ganun, available within the earth. So, yun yung paninwala ni Aristotle. Unfortunately, this was deemed wrong right now. Kasi, sabi nung panahon nila, pag galima, nagsama-sama nga si water, si earth, or somehow, eh, si air, babalik at babalik sila sa original position nila. Correct naman. But then, it's probably, that's the basic notion nila before. Pero without that, baka wala din tayong Aristotle's theory of motion. So, dito, according to Aristotle, kasi siya yung kakaiba dun sa paniniwala ng mga kasamahan niya, Kapag nahulog yung isang bagay, dire-diretso siya towards the center of the earth because natural place ng lahat ng object yung earth. Okay? Yung center of the earth. So, alimbawa, yung fruit, pag right hand na siya, nabulok na siya, mahuhulog at mahuhulog yon, Okay? Kunyari, may chinelas ka, tinapon mo, pataas, or kunyari, nagbabato ka ng manga, and the mango tree is 5 meters tall and you cannot climb it. And then, ang ninyari is the chinelas was left. Nagsabit or sumabit yung chinelas sa branch of the mango tree. So, what, ha what will happen? Mahulog at mahulog yun. Pwedeng 10 years from now, 15 years from now, mahulog at mahulog yun by means of the gravity. And then, half the object fall faster than lighter ones. This is partly correct and partly wrong. Okay? So, kasi, because of the the air particulates or the air particles available in the atmosphere, magkaiba yung kanyang speed. Right now, if we remove all the molecules of the air and we throw tennis ball or ping pong ball and feather niya, and we will see whether both of them are will fall at the same speed or in a vacuum vacuum space so sabay po sila regardless of the weight na babagsak sa floor okay the third one is object fall faster in air than water this assumption is because may resisting force kay air or water and another one is objects sometimes move away from their natural force so this is caused kasi right now Ang explanation natin, may outward or may outside source or outside factor that cause that movement. And remember, because of Aristotle's fa uh, ano, reputation, his idea remained to be used for 2,000 years. However, nagkaroon din tayo ng bagong 
law of motion, law of gravity. And we reputed, refuted already the credibility and validity of Aristotle theory of motion. So, sino yung nag-refute? The first to refute Aristotle after 2,000 years is si Galileo. Okay? So, tiningnan niya, kinumpute niya, nag-observe siya, and nakita niya na ang falling objects is sabay babagsak. Example niyan is yung experiment niya sa Leaning Tower of Pisa, magkasabay niyang tinapon yung dalawang bola, the one is lighter and then the one is metal, and then tiningnan niya kung sabay siyang babagsak. Of course, hindi yun sabay babagsak. Kasi nga, meron tayong air molecules. Pero if we will throw it at the same time in a space where no air molecules is present, so probably sabay siyang babagsak. Okay? So, remember, depende din sa bilis yung angle of inclination. Ngayon, sabay ngayon ninyong hinulog yung object. Pero yung isang nga yung location ng object na pinagtapunan ngayon is higher than the other one. So, mas mabilis yung pagbabag pagbagsak ng isa because magkiba yung effect ng, ng gravity of the, to the two objects. Especially pa kung magkaiba yung kanyang height. Okay? Ang computation nito is D over T2. What is this? D is distance. T is the time multiplied by itself. Okay? So for Galileo, he concluded that all objects on Earth can fall with the same constant acceleration. Pero because of during his time, walang masyadong magandang facilities to support his claim, hindi siya agad-agad na test. Okay? At Galileo, upon computation or careful computation and deduction, nakuha niya yung speed of gravity, uh, the, the, the gravity constant or gravitational constant. So, tinatawag din siyang constant acceleration due to gravity. That is 9.8 meter per per second square or pwede din 980 centimeter per second square so this one is used as letter G or represented by letter G kasi pababa yung kanyang motion so for after Galileo nag follow na si Newton so according to Newton this is now the Newton's law of universal gravitation his, ex, uh, his interest lies on the continuation of Galileo's investigation. So dito, nakita ni Newton na yung pinag-aralan ni Galileo ay pwedeng ma-expound pa. Okay? Kasi nakita niya yung bakit mas mabilis yung ibang heavenly object kagaya ni Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn. Bakit mas mabilis yung movement nila than the other planets as well. So, Sa legend, si Newton habang nakaupo sa garden, naguhuyok-huyong or nagko-contemplate, bumagsak yung apple sa gilid niya. And because of that, nakuha natin yung eureka ng point of life niya. So, nalaman niya na may gravity talaga pala. And he repeat all the experiments available and it resulted or yielded to the same, ano, Output, which is lahat ng bagay will move towards the earth if you throw it upward because of the gravity. Okay, let's proceed now with mass and weight. What's the difference between the two? So remember, magkaiba ang mass at weight. Okay? And remember also that mass and weight is affected by the earth's gravitational force. Okay? At magkaiba din ang effect ng mass and weight sa bigness or smallness of an object. Okay? Pag sinabi natin mass, ayan yung nakikita nyo sa taas yung formula, mass is used to indicate the quantity of matter. Gaano kadami yung particles doon? Okay? So, and pag may effect si inertia kay property or particle of that matter, we call it mass. What is inertia? This is the property of matter to oppose an movement or a movement or change in the state of motion. 
pag sinabi naman nating weight, ano pagkakaiba niya sa mass? Si mass is the property of the body, while pag may weight is the gravity of the earth affecting the mass. Okay? Or acting on the body. So, ang mass, halimbawa, nagpunta ka mula, mula dito, pumunta ka ng moon. So, dito, ang timbang mo is 50 kg. Kunyari, pagpunta mo sa moon, nagi ka lang na 25 kg. So, ang tawag natin doon is weight. Pero ang mass ninyo is the same. Parehas lang kayo ng dami ng property mula dito or papuntang moon unless putulin mo yung buhok mo, putulin mo yung katawan mo para mag-iba na yung weight mo pagdating doon sa, a uh, mass mo pagdating mo sa moon. Okay? We have also projectile motion. When we say projectile motion or projectile, this is the motion of the ball due to trajectory or yung paggalaw ng isang bagay papunta doon sa horizontal path or dire-diretso yung kanyang path. Okay? Projectile motion is the motion of a body at which meron siyang constant acceleration. So, walang nagbabago sa acceleration niya, remains the same siya. Okay? And then, ang initial velocity niya plus affected ng gravity is the same. And remember, when we say trajectory, this is the path of the projectile. So, kung halimbawa, nagpaputok ka ng baril, kung saan yung path ng projectile ng baril na yun, o ng bala ng baril na yun, that is the tinatawag nating trajectory. So, that would be all. Thank you so much for listening. For your activity, please contact your teacher. Thank you.